Welcome back to Rexall Place. The Leafs and the Edmonton Oilers and the Knights of the Knotted Nets. Tonight, James Reimer trying to improve on a 3-0 record. And uh, Randy Bachman uh, losing in his first effort, but a 0.93 goals against average. He gets the start here tonight. And Joffrey Lupel is back into the lineup for the Maple Leafs, and that is good news. As for the first time this season, arguably, well, I guess without Tyler Bozak, the argument is over, but the Leafs finally get a little bit healthy here. Puck down into the Toronto zone, cleared off the glass by Mason Raymond, and it's going to be a face-off deep in Toronto territory. Well, the Leafs will have to be sure they're safe in the neutral zone against a very good counter-attacking, speedy Edmonton Oilers team with all kinds of youth and enthusiasm. But the key tonight for Toronto, play in Edmonton zone against the defense has been struggling big time in Edmonton all season long. Face off in the Toronto zone. Nugent Hopkins leaning in against Boland wins the draw. Jeff Petrie sends it into the slot. Here's Nugent Hopkins with a shot right on. Stopped by Reimer. It's played into the corner and grabbed off by Franson and sent it around. Tonight starting lineups brought to you by Intact Insurance. Your home, your auto, your business. Ask your broker about Intact Insurance Company. Long lead pass, too far at center ice, onto the stick of Franson. His speed is intercepted and brought down into the Toronto zone. And a wrist shot juggled, and then cleared away from Reimer's goal crease area. As breaking in there on the right side was Alex Hemsky. Cleared off the glass and around on the boards. Everly trying to pinch down, but can't come away with it. And Phil Kessel, one of the three stars in the NHL. Named this week, gets it around on the boards and out at center for Kadri. He's got Kessel breaking. Kessel's alone. Scores! Six goals in his last four games. Phil Kessel opens the scoring. Well, that's ridiculous hands by Kessel there. I mean, what patience, but it all starts behind the net. The Oilers get caught pinching a bit, and Kadri with that great speed just takes off, and Kessel beats his man to the net as well as the forward can't get back in time. What a play by Kadri to swoop it across. How about these hands? I mean, no chance for Bachman at all as he just throws it right between his legs. And just a terrific skilled goal by two extremely skilled players. Well... 11 of his 14 points have been at even strength. He gets the Leafs out on the right side of the ledger early on. Phil Kessel's been outstanding. Kadri trying to come out in front. He barges into the netminder and couldn't get it out in front of the net. And the Oilers will try to break it out at center ice. Flips down into the zone. Yakupov goes in there after it with Nick Schultz. Played up on the boards by Kessel. Kessel. Swings it back, and now Carl Gunnarsson will bank it for Dion Phaneuf. The Edmonton native can't make a play as it comes to an open wing. Down the boards it comes now as Schultz trying to go to the net. Rolls it around back to the goal. Justin Schultz up against the wall. Comes away with it, tries to center off a skate. Lupo will get it out. Kessel to Van Riemsdyk. Leafs need a change, and he'll shoot it in. Clement almost was able to jump in there. Carter Ashton, almost too many men on the ice, and a long shot is smothered by Reimer as Boyd Gordon is in there looking for a rebound. Well, Belov is the culprit that goes down the boards here without any support behind him. And Raymond with a pretty good tip. He sees him coming, hears him, tips it by him, no support behind him. And then Yakupov is the player trying like a crazy to get back, but he can't even catch Phil Kessel. And a terrific pass on the play by Kadri. Eighth of the year for Kessel, a sharp angle shot handled by Reimer. Gardner trying to free it up but can't. Back of the net is Arcabello, centers in front. Oh, and a quick shot there, went over top of the net. Good try by Boyd Gordon playing in his 500 NHL game. And here's a chance now for the Leafs with Gardner going wide. Around back of the net, he centers! Two shots, three shots by Lupel, and it went off the side of the net wide. Lupel back into the corner after it, trying to free it up for Carter Ashton. Al McClement adds some support, but the Oilers finally get it up on the wing and clear it by Morgan Riley to center. All Ranger cut off the rain, or the, uh, the Oiler there as Everly couldn't get into the zone. 
and it's right back down into Edmonton territory. Icing charge here against Toronto. Good start for both teams who have had scoring chances, but the Leafs lead 1-0. And Gardner here with a great rush, and Bachman there with two great saves. And this kid played the other night and was spectacular in goal against the Los Angeles Kings as he put on quite a clinic with 47 saves and a 2-1 shootout loss. And he's not big, he's just around 5'10", they list him at. Very quick and positionally sound, very similar to Jonathan Bernier, the way he plays. Played down into the Edmonton zone again, another icing charge. Here's a look at Dallas Eakins. Eakins, and what a uh, job he has here to try to teach these young kids how to play both ends of the ice, and his defense is limited at the moment. And it is a work in progress, believe me, and he hasn't had many saves so far in this young NHL season. And one of the major aspects that has been an Achilles heel has been the goaltender. But Bachman played very, very well the other night, and it's getting the start here again tonight. And if Richard Bachman is able to do it, there's going to be some changes here with Dubnik and others who are not able to do it at this particular well, point. They struggle. Yeah, well, Dubnik's a pretty good goalie. He just had a tough start, and he has not had a lot of help. He's out at the moment with an ankle injury, so he will be back fairly soon. He skated again this morning. Jason LaBarbera is the other, is the backup goaltender tonight. Here's Fanuf. Dishing it back now for Carl Gunnarsson. one nothing Toronto. Raymond brings it in on the right side. Raymond to the middle of the ice. Got a shot away and had it blocked before it got to the net. Swung around for Gunnarsson. Far point. Gunnarsson thought about coming D to D, but goes around back of the goal with it. Cut off there by the Oilers and fed up on the wing. And it'll be brought out into the center ice area by Jeff Petrie. His feet on the right side ends up down in the Toronto zone as both teams are trying to change. Gunnarsson around back of the net. Ryan Jones, the Chatham native, is up there forechecking for the Oilers. And the energy in this building is electric here tonight. The Leafs will probably get this kind of reception in all three Western Canada venues, as they haven't been out here in a while. Now into the corner it goes. Here's centering pass. Shot goes over top of the net by Hensky. And it's going to end up in the screen and out of play. Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. Die-hard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Reimers had to make a couple of pretty good saves here early in this period. The Leaf defense has had a little trouble with the speedy Edmonton forecheck when Edmonton has been able to get in behind the goal line on Toronto. Yakupov out there with... Gagne, who is back into the lineup, and that's a welcome addition for Dallas Akins. Off the boards for Kessel. Fed it ahead for Kadri. He got it a little further into the center ice area before it's turned back the other way by Ferentz. Ferentz dishes it in over the line. Cody Franson knocked it back. Ferentz sends it back in on a delay. And so Franson with some time to Morgan Riley. A pass ahead off Kadri, and he's filled in by Nick Schultz. Down on the near side for Ferentz. Puck comes ahead at center for Gagne. And up on the right wing side, it goes Everly going wide. And a weak shot goes wide of the Toronto goal. And Everly goes hard into the inboards. He's back on his skates, though. Riley trying to fish it away from him and has. And now brought out on the pass on the right wing side to Kessel. Kessel thought about shooting it in and then saw that he had some open ice and decided to try the attack. It's turned over and Edmonton brings it right back. Everly was slow to the bench, Greg. Boy, they've had trouble, haven't they, with oh, their injuries? Boy. Man. On the left wing side, a long shot is juggled by Bachman and held for a face-off in the Oiler zone. And speaking about injuries, Sam Gagne was injured in training camp. As he got hit with a high stick here by Cassian. And he broke his jaw, and it was a clean break. He, it wasn't just... I mean, he's got screws in his in his jaw, and it was a terrible, terrible break. And to come back as early as he did, and his agent, Jeff Jackson, was telling me he actually bought a bone stimulator so he could use it to get back quicker and did whatever he could do 
to make sure he healed in a hurry to get back in the lineup, and he is early and ahead of schedule. Yeah, Greg, he says the swelling's going to continue for about three months. And so is the helmet he has to wear, I believe, as well, which will make it difficult for a playmaker like Sam Gagne. Saw his dad the other night. He was anxious for him to get back into the lineup as well. one nothing Toronto here in Edmonton. Oh, Kessel, Van Riemsdyk, they've been quite a pair, and here's a look at Kessel's work. The last number of goals, and the hands on Phil Kessel in tight. And he just seems to arrive at the right time, but this one here is a work of art. As he comes back against the flow, takes his time, and tucks it in between the legs of Backman. The other three stars in the week, Steven Stamkos of Tampa, Ryan Kessler we'll see in Vancouver. Here's Acton dropping it back. A long shot by Gazdick goes high off the boards into the corner. Acton gets it back to the blue line. Near side now for Grabashkov. He is tied up. Puck along the boards or can't get it out. And it's grabbed off by Jake Gardner. Gardner sends it back into the crowd. Played by Eager up on the wing. Grabbed off by Acton to the blue line. Long shot wide. Comes in front of the net. And unable to get a stick on it was Luke Gazdick. Played out into the center ice area. Rabeskov turns back with a pass ahead, and Hemsky gets it up on the right wing side. Nugent Hopkins into the slot, a shot. Great blocking arm save made there by Reimer. On the boards is Nugent Hopkins again, trying to cycle it along. Cut off by David Boland and sent out at center. Nice beat received there by Mason Raymond. He made an excellent play to come up with that puck. Raymond has it again in the zone. Back to the blue line it goes. Now to Cody France in a long shot. An enormous rebound out in front. And it is taken to safety now in front of the center. Shot down into the Toronto zone. Centering pass block out of the net. Sprawling on it is Reimer. And he's going to hold on. Pushing it behind the Toronto goal. Nothing more to develop there. And the tonight's keys for the game brought to you by Tim Hortons, Canada's favorite coffee. Well, you heard Doug McLean talk about the special team's advantage for the Maple Leafs tonight. No doubt about that. And the Oilers have not had many saves this year. We talked about how Bachman came and played so well in his first start for the Edmonton Oilers a couple of nights ago. And they're looking for a few of those saves again tonight here against the Maple Leafs. Face off control by the Leafs in back of the net. Morgan Riley loses it. Jones trying to come out, goes back to the blue line. Smead now on the left point. Back into the slot, bouncing puck. Riley knocked it down. Still free in front of the goal, and it's freed up to Clarkson. David Clarkson sends it off the boards to center before taking a hit there from Ryan Jones. Back come the Oilers in on the right side. On shot, off the blocking arm of Reimer again. Clear to the line, not out. Kept in here with Yakupov, and he couldn't get a shot. Knocked down by Finuff to Kessel. Kessel off the board, but not out. Backhanded right back in again by Sam Gagne. Now Carl Gunnarsson gets it to the line. Again, oh, it was out. Just out. And I mean just out. And it's offside at the Toronto Blue Line with 11.54 to go in the first. And the Leafs leading 1-0. Well, Randy Carlisle still not thrilled with the way his team is playing. He says it's coming. And I asked him about his Blue Line, and he said, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. They're a work in progress still, but he said they'll be fine. We'll be all right back there. And the one thing that you can't take away from the Leafs, they're putting points in the bank. And at this time of year, it's a valuable asset when the team's trying to make the playoffs. J.R. Van Riemsdyk got to an icing to deny it. Here's Spinoff at the blue line along the wall and backhanded in by Van Riemsdyk for Kadri. Kadri comes away with it in the corner. Back to the blue line, Carl Gunnarsson. Out of Fanuf. Off the boards to Kessel, coming off the wall. Kessel still with it. Tried to slide it in for Kadri. That didn't work. And here is Yakupov getting the puck out at center ice. Brought in over the line by Jordan Everly on the right side. And the pass there by Gagne was blocked by Fanuf. Into the corner is Everly. Everly twisting and turning, trying to get it into the slot. A shot that stopped. And it's going to be lifted into the center ice area by. As of Kadri as he heads to the bench. The Leafs are going to have to watch their changes here. A couple of times they've had opportunities to change and they have not got the puck deep. And it hasn't cost them yet. But back into the lead zone. Lupul 
tied up his man to allow the puck to slide into neutral ice. Bounced over his head, now brought on by Gardner, and he decides to turn back with it. Gardner, a nice speed in for Lupo. Drop pass for Ashton. Let alone into the corner. Lupo gets it back to Carter Ashton to the blue line. Paul Ranger doesn't shoot it. Now he does. And it's off the pad and into the corner from Backman. Eager up on the right wing side, and it'll be shot down into the Toronto zone by Mark Arcabello. And around back of the net now for... Gardner, Gardner slashes it along, but Smead is there to pinch to keep it in. Gardner intercepts. He has some skating room, but he'll give it off, and Carter Ashton gets it out at center. He is scampering to the bench. Ashton is, as the Oilers send it back down into the Toronto zone. Gardner against the boards. Ranger helps him out. Everly trying to force his way away from Gardner. He gets it back to the point. A pass from Petrie into the slot. Oilers come away with it, cycle it back down into the corner. Jordan Everly coming out, drops it off for Ladislav Smeed. Smeed sends it to the front of the net, loose puck in front of the goal, and it is still not cleared, and finally pushed over on the board. Long shot by Petrie is blocked, Colt Orr breaking it center. Orr tried to roll it in deep but could not. Leaves almost too many men on the ice. Brought in by Acton, offside. On the right side for Alishemsky. A goal from Phil Kessel to improve a scoring streak to four games. Well, we talked about the neutral zone against the speedy Edmonton team that can forecheck well twice in the last couple of shifts here. The Leafs have an opportunity to get it in deep, and they don't. And that left some tired defense out. This was a chance to score. They were hemmed in, and then later on, they got their forwards changed. And look at the defense trying to get off. And again, they don't get it deep. And the defense had to scramble back to get on the ice, and the Oilers get another chance. And at that time, they went offside. So the Leafs have to do a better job here in the neutral zone, or sooner or later, it's going to come back to bite them. Clarkson lays it past a stick. But they're going to call this icing against Toronto. And it'll be brought back into the Maple Leaf zone to the right of Reimer. This period brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. David Clarkson into his third game as a member of the Maple Leafs. Looking for his first point in a blue and white jersey. Had eight hits the other night. At the blue line, knocked down. Is that a high stick? No, they say it isn't. And the shot from Nugent Hopkins went off a stick and up into the screen. It was rather close to being a high stick. James Reimers had a good start to his first period. Yeah, well, he's been busy. And the problem is here, again, because of neutral zone turnovers and Edmonton doing a terrific job in the leaf zone, Reimers had to have a pretty solid period. Shots 8-7 in favor of Edmonton at the moment. Gagne along with Yakupov out there. Back to the blue line. Ferentz a shot. Kicked into the corner by Reimer on the far side. Down goes Fanuf. The puck comes back to the blue line and still not cleared. It's now a chance in front of the net. is blocked by Fanuf. And the rebound comes all the way to center ice. Shot right back in again. Reimer out to stop that back of the goal. He's going to leave it there for Carl Gunnarsson. Shots are favoring the Oilers, 9-7 in this first period. Kessel on the near boards, banks it in over the line, but Cadbury can't get to it before it's rattled back to the blue line. And now trying to bring it out, now good job by Kessel to knock it away, and it's cleared down into the Toronto zone for an icing. And it'll be brought back into Edmonton territory to the left. Get an oil change by December 15th and get a free gift. Michelin Hybrid Wiper Blades. Get your coupon at MrLube.com. Bill Kessel with the goal. And they've given an assist now to Mason Raymond along with Kadri. Kessel's eighth at 1 away to the first period. He's going to have a streak continue. He might as well get it over with in a hurry. And he did. This is going to be rolled, but not far enough for icing, and so the Oilers get their change, and Rangers back to the Toronto goal. A pass up on the left wing side for Carter Ashton. Ashton rolls it down into the corner around back of the net. McClement couldn't get to it. Ben Eager on the near wall, can't get it out. Lupel's shot. Caroms to the far side. 
In goes Ashton after it, but it's brought up with a lead pass for Eager. That's offside. He would have been fine had it not been partially touched by the Toronto player, Gardner. But by the time it settled down, he was about two feet over the line and offside. Oh, see if Edmonton tries to stretch out a little bit. I mean, it's Ben Eager, so a bit of a break there. But we'll watch for the skill guys, see if they do sneak behind the leap defense here as they work on their breakouts. Face off to the right of the Edmonton goal. Trevor Smith in there. Leafs have blocked seven shots. Edmonton has had just one block. Smith leaning in. Lost the draw there to Boyd Gordon. He's among the league leaders in face-off proficiency. Puck is out at center ice, but they're saying it was a glove pass. And so it'll be brought back into the center ice area. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are on there with uh, Trevor Smith. Now a change made by Randy Carlisle. And Edmonton will counter as well. Yeah. Aikens here going line for line so far in this first period against the Toronto Maple Leafs watching his matchup as he gets a course last change. Nugent Hopkins along with Jones and Hensky and down into the Oilers zone. Hey, but right onto the stick of Boland and Dave Boland decided to see if Richard Bachman was back into position and paying attention and snapped it right away. Well, the shoot in here and Backman with the right idea, but <laughs> that giveaway, but he gets away with it. Backman is from Salt Lake City, Utah. And was drafted by the Dallas Stars. Worked in their organization for a while in the American Hockey League. Came out of college two years early when he got the contract from Dallas. Center ice now for Clarkson. Up on the wing. Pushed into the Toronto zone. Riley couldn't get to it. Long, easy save there by Reimer. And now here's Hemsky fanning on a pass. And Franson gets it ahead. Dave Boland to Clarkson. Clarkson in with a toe drag and then let it go. And it went wide. Franson trying to keep the puck in. Bounces along the board, but they can't swat it in deep. Brought out at center ice now by Gagne, who drops it back. The pass coming in front of the goal. Down is Reimer. And the puck went wide of the net as Hemsky drove across the crease. Right out into the center ice area. Schultz. will play it off to Jeff Petrie, who backpedals a little deeper into his own zone. Nick Schultz gets it back, and now up ahead at center ice it comes. Launched in by Gagne, and into the corner goes Carl Gunnarsson. Round on the boards for Fanuf, up on the wing for Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk, a pass for Kessel too far. Intercepted in the neutral zone, partially there by Carl Gunnarsson, but he couldn't get away, but now Kadri does. Kadri in across the line. Kadri with a backhand to the net, but it's too high and is easily caught by Backman and held for a faceoff in Edmonton territory. Oilers with a couple of solid chances in this first period, and they go to the net with some authority here, and Reimer holds his ground, and then a very good defensive play on the back check there by Mason Raymond. And the puck just squeaks by the post. During Kessel's four games, last four games, he has scored six goals on 11 shots. That last save, too, Reimer did a good job getting the stick into the puck there as it was coming across his goal crease. Eager rolls it in over the line. Gunnarsson takes it back to the net with Eager draped on him. Gunnarsson doing a nice job of controlling the puck. And then he gets it again in the corner, gets it up on the wing. Carter Ashton is bumped into as the defense pinch. And Gunnarsson will try the near side for Fanuf. Off the glass and out it goes. It won't go for icing. But it'll force the defense back. And Justin Schultz. Lays it out into the center ice area, and Paul Ranger will retrieve it in the Toronto zone. Ranger a quick up on the right side, on the left side for Lupel, and down into the Edmonton zone it goes. Up the round back of the net for Schultz. And will drop it off there for Grabeshkov, and out come the Oilers at center ice. Yakupov in, trying to get through the defense, could not. The net gets dislodged. Yakupov gets tangled up with Reimer. And now Jake Gardner's in a bit of a tussle here with Yakupov. 
Reimer's had just about enough of being run, I think. Yeah. And he's decided that if you're going to do this, I'm going to at least get the blocking glove in your schnoz. So the intensity level is ratcheting up a bit. Well, Yakupov with his first goal of the season a couple of nights ago, starting to play a little bit better after sitting out by the coach a couple of games. Goes to the net here with authority, gets tangled up with Reimer. Reimer doesn't like it much, and then Gardner comes to the defense of his goaltender, and a little face wash, and here goes Gardner in, and they're both going to end up the penalty box. Yeah, Reimer, two minutes. He's been run before and uh, obviously doesn't like it. Would you? No. I prefer, I think I prefer Brian Giant over Neil Yakupov. <laughs> you would. Hit me in the chest. Yeah. So the faceoff is brought outside the blue line. Coincident minors to both players. Yakupov and uh, Jake Gardner. And so the Leafs four on four will send Kessel and Kadri out to join Fanuf and Gunnarsson. And now Kadri waved out of the faceoff circle. Gagne will take the draw against Kessel. And it's scrubbed and controlled. Kellogg sends it back into his own Jake zone. Gardner. Schultz gets Two it ahead and it's shot down into the Toronto end. Close. Reimer out there Two minutes to do a little Irish two-step to get out of the way. And now Kessel's in over the line. Only to have it swatted back out into the center ice area. Oilers get it into the zone. Far side for Gagne. Stolen by Fanuc. And he dishes it off and Kadri drops it back. And Fanuc will start out at center. Fanuc to Kadri. Kadri with Kessel breaking and a big collision there sends Kadri sprawling as Belov stepped up in the hit. Gagne to the far side to Belov. His shot off the chest as the rebound in front of the net. And a roll to the side of the goal and Riley skate may have prevented that from going in. Morgan Riley taken down on a hit. And Gagne gave him a whack as he went by just to basically to say he was sorry. Now brought out on the left wing side. Nugent Hopkins to center. Back checking is Dave Boland, a.k.a. the Rat, and it's back in over the line and a drop pass to Riley. Roll to the goal crease, but didn't have much momentum after it was partially blocked. Boland almost hit Nugent Hopkins coming out. Reimer around back of the net. Nugent Hopkins centers it from Hemsky. Robbed by Reimer. Big save there by James Reimer. Graveshkov in deep, can't make a play. Another Leaf giveaway due to pressure by Edmonton, and Reimer's been the difference in this first period. My goodness. Morgan Riley coming out slowly. Now throws it down deep into Oiler territory. Bachman sends it back along the boards, and the Oilers are back to recover it with 3.26 to go in the first. The Leafs leading one to nothing. Rink wide feed for Everly. Everly dropping it back. Now gives it off here. It's Gagne trying to make a move. Poked off his stick, though, by Ranger. Then Ranger was upended. And there's going to be a penalty here to Sam Gagne. Lupo carries to center. Pass to the line and brought in over the line by Jay McClement. McClement rolling it around back of the net. It's going to be touched over there by, or is it, Yakupov? I guess it is now. And here's the first power play for either team coming as a result of the tripping penalty. For help finding the best tires for your vehicle and your budget, talk to Cal during our Don't Wait for Winter sale. Featuring the Bridgestone APT4. Sale ends November 2nd. 17 minute mark even. Gagne for tripping. The Leafs power play ranked third in the National Hockey League against the penalty kill, which is 29th in the league for Edmonton. Yeah, and Gagne just behind the net there. He hauls down. Down. Uh, Ranger and here's the earlier save by Reimer again as he scrambled extremely well gets back up on his feet and He's been great in this period I think Riley skate he just saw it off the corner there may have prevented that from going in Kept in by Knuff off the win. Here's a shot. Pat save but a big rebound But it got past all of the white jerseys and it was sent down the ice by the order penalty kill but off around back to the net yeah, a couple of rebounds available here for the Maple Leafs in this first period Lloyd Gordon with a as it comes up on the wing and then fed in by Cody Franson. Bachman plays it back along the boards. Franson pinches. The puck comes free and he goes in there after it. Around the boards to the far side for Kessel. Kessel couldn't keep it in as it comes out over the line. Bolin backing it up. Gets it off to Fanoff who carries across the line. Van Riemsdyk works into the corner. 
Al swinging it around to the near side. Franson got there just in time. Fed back in along the boards, but it's cleared out at center ice. Franson stopping it there, and now Kessel will gain the zone. Kessel works down the board, sends it back to Dion Phaneuf. Just kept in a bouncing puck, now to Gardner. Jake Gardner back to Phaneuf, the wrist shot in traffic is deflected and up into the screen it goes with 55 seconds left in the first power play for either team. This period brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. Right. Randy Carlo talked about they like to see Kadri go a little more north-south than east-west. Well, when you go east-west a lot, sometimes you pay for it. And maybe this will cure the habit a little bit here as Bell off. Comes across and just steps up on Kadri. Kadri bounced right back up. Mason Raymond shot off an ankle wide. Riley hit the referee with it. Grabbed off by the Maple Leafs. Back to the blue line. Gardner just does keep it in. Kadri at the half boards down low and into the corner now. Got it back again. He's got Lupel in front of the net. Raymond working the near boards. Gets the pass from Gardner. Raymond into the slot. The shot. Big rebound in front. Another shot by Lupel. Another drive is deflected wide of the net by Richard Bachman. Leafs get it back to the blue line to Gardner again. Gardner walks the line, wrist shot, bounces it wide of the net. Jeff Petrie trying to clear, and he finds an opening to send it down the ice. Played ahead to the line and in by goaltender Reimer. But Raymond couldn't find a friendly jersey, and now a race for the puck down the right wing side. Trying to center Yakupov in front. Off the shoulder of Reimer and wide. Reimer trying to scramble back to his feet. Leafs give him some time as they play it around on the boards. Kadri, penalty is over. He's going to roll it into the zone and peel to the bench. It was a clear cut three on two from well starting at the oil blue line. And on the right side, it's knocked around back of the net. Kemsky couldn't get to it. And now Carter Ashton does and gets it out at center. Two on one. Here's McClement with it along with Clarkson. Tried to find Clarkson in a nice defensive play there. Sprawling to block the pass. Another pass into the corner finds Jay McClement. McClement upended. Pokes it along. Carter Ashton allowed to come out, but didn't bring the puck with him. Now he gets it back again behind the net. Saucers it back to the blue line. Carl Gunnarsson. Seven seconds left in the period. McClement trying to center there for Clarkson. It doesn't work. The Leafs are going to go to the dressing room with the lead as it is kept in there at the last moment by Paul Ranger and that will end the period. Kessel's eighth from Cadbury and Raymond at 108 as the Leafs out in front one to nothing. Let's go to Darren and the guys. It's a little chilly here in Edmonton but still rather nice and in fact uh, our Canada's women's national team soccer team is going to be playing outdoors at Commonwealth Stadium tomorrow against South Korea. Indoors, Kessel's eighth from Kadri and Raymond at 108 of the first period has the Maple Leafs out in front one to nothing. Oh, what a pretty goal it was too. Kadri finds him here, sweeps the puck to the slot. Look at these hands. Right between the legs of the Bachman in his first shot of the game. And a beautiful goal by Phil Kessel to get the Leafs the only goal of the period. And you pair him with Van Riemsdyk as well and look at their numbers. And they have had just an excellent start to the season. And another player who's been playing awfully well every time he gets to the net, and that's James Reimer. And Reimer's first period was excellent as the Edmonton Oilers took advantage of many Leaf giveaways in period number one. And if it wasn't for Reimer, this game would at least be tied and, the, and maybe worse for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And shots are an issue again in this first period. Edmonton eight shoots the Leafs 14 to 12. And Leafs are 28th in the league in that department. Yeah, 28. They've allowed 433 shots over the uh, course of the season thus far. Second most in the NHL. And uh, look at the bowling line that has been excellent since being put together. Well, they should be good in this game because if they can get in deep against the Edmonton Oilers defense, Edmonton should give them a lot of chances because of their pressure game. And here's a look and a sampling of what David Clarkson has done since coming off his suspension. So the Leafs will defend the goal down to our right. The Oilers to our left. Dion Phaneuf and Phil Kessel joined now by Jonathan Bernier coming out late from the dressing room as we get set to start this second period. And it's been a while since the Leafs have been out in Western Canada, so 
There are a lot of Leaf fans in the building here tonight. This will probably be duplicated in Calgary and Vancouver on the rest of this stop. The Edmonton Oilers are just glad to be home. Man. Boy, they're going to have played third. They have Detroit coming in at home after the Leafs. Then they're back on the road again. And when that road trip is done, they will have played 13 road games and six at home. They're just coming back eight of nine on the road. Yep. This first game at home back games are usually difficult. Although I thought Edmonton skated very well in period one. On the boards to the near side for Mason Raymond. No stranger to Rexall Place would be Raymond after his tenure in Vancouver. Although the folks around here are suggesting the ice here always thought to have been the best in the National Hockey League has slipped dramatically. Building getting older, ice equipment getting older. Here's Petrie trying to get a shot to the net and he does as Reimer made the save. Gobbled up and tried to play back in along the board by Alish Hensky. It's turned over. Raymond trying to chop it ahead and Clarkson would have been ahead of him. Now Dave Boland carries to the line. Boland looking for an outlet goes to wide. Now tries to swing it in front of the net. They do. Oh, and it just did get caught up in Richard Bachman. He was into overdrive there, wasn't he? Well, a little curl pass. And you can almost sweep it across the crease if it's going that slow. But it was very effective as the defense back in for the Oilers, back in, back in, and there's that play. The puck just had eyes. And look at, look at the delay. The delay, head up, head up. There's Bowling. What a pass. And if Raymond could have got that off right away, he might have had it. And a real good second effort by Bachman to get over on that play and make a good save. Draw wasn't done correctly. They'll do it over again. By the way, the Oilers won 59% of the draws. Boyd Gordon's among the league, yeah. league's best, and Kanye, they've been missing. And they're both 5-2 and two in the first period. Kadri facing off with Kanye here. Have to get that fan a headset and a microphone down here. On the boards along the wall, Kessel trying to keep it in and does. Kadri with a little toe drag shot, and that was stopped by Bachman. Played high into the center ice area, Panuf unable to get to it. Brought on by Everly, he drops for Gagne, and his feed back for Everly didn't work. Kadri sauces it off the boards, and it's played by Van Riemsdyk, the center. Kadri trying to tip it by Yakupov, but that didn't work. Now here is a pass in front of the net, and a shot that grazes the post, and it comes out on the near side. A two-on-one for Toronto. Kessel in on the right side, looking in front of shot, scores! Van Riemsdyk, the magical dude. You just witnessed the good and the bad of creative skill players. Here's Kadri trying to do that little extra for the breakaway, and you know, sometimes you got to try things, and Kadri doesn't get away with it there, but then a terrific back check here by Van Riemsdyk, and the speed and the skill of the good, and away they go. And this creates a three-on-one as the Oilers get caught again. What a pass from Kessel to Van Riemsdyk. This is a recording, and a beautiful goal once again, and the Maple Leafs get a 2-0 lead. 16th point of the year for Kessel, 6th goal of the year, and the 12th point for Van Riemsdyk. And it is 2 to nothing in favor of Toronto. Gardner launching him along the boards for Lupo. Lupo turns, rink wide, Ranger on for Ashton, and down into the zone it goes. Another even strength goal against the Oilers. The Maple Leafs with a 2-0 advantage. Now in over the line comes Ferentz. Andrew Ferentz goes into the corner. Captain of the Oilers has it knocked away, and it is played back into the near side. And when that dynamic duo has combined on a goal this year, the Leafs have gone 7 and 0. The pass goes through center and will end up being an icing charge as soon as Riley gets past the faceoff dots and it's going to be brought back down into Edmonton territory. Little things in the course of a game that win you games and Gardner was caught a little flat-footed here. Look at the Clement. A terrific backside pressure there to help his defenseman out and then the Leafs gain possession of the puck on uh, Ferentz who jumped into the play. He's the best defensive forward in the National Hockey League. The 
Face off coming to the left of Richard Bachman. We need to get a guy named Turner on this line, and then we can have back and Turner over. Yeah, he, that was coming. But at some point tonight, Mr. Bowen. Yeah. Well, I love that. <laughs> Absolutely. Right in, right in your wheelhouse. Right in, in my age bracket. You got yep. that right, Pontiac. Face off to the left. Smith upended in the face off circle there by Will Acton, but the puck goes free, and Acton, a Stouffville native, gets it out and shot right back down into Edmonton territory. Luke Gazdick gets it out at center, and in on the line goes. Jordan Eberle trying to get it behind the net for Acton. Gazdick is out in front of the net. And now here is Smith. Trevor Smith getting it up on the board, but Orr couldn't get it out. But now it just squirts to center ice as Grabeshkov couldn't pinch down to keep it in. I'm sure Randy Carlisle feels a little bit older tonight because Luke Gazdick's dad, Michael, was part of the defense tandem with Carlisle and Ferris when they played junior hockey in Sudbury. And Luke was told this week, find yourself a place to stay, young man. And uh, he's pretty happy about that. Former Erie Otter. Around on the board's far side. He's had four fights this season and added that physical element to the Oilers' attack. Here's Gardner in with a shot. Big rebound trickles just by to the post. Has Backman lost sight of that? Clarkson back behind the net for Raymond. Mason Raymond after the loose puck. Raymond curls to the blue line, just keeping it in. And he walked a tightrope there. Clarkson back of the net, couldn't get to it. And Justin Schultz bangs it out into the center ice area. Brought the center and dished in now by Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins around back of the net, Gardner after him. Kessel coming late, and it bounces off. Ladislav Steed stick to center. Almost a giveaway here. Kadri trying to get through. Oh, and he's taken heavily into the end boards. Kadri is not getting up. He is down on all fours after going in almost nose first into the end boards with the Euler defenseman right behind him. Leaf athletic therapist Marty Dudgeon right on the spot here. Watch the entire thing. Let's have a look at it. Kadri goes in, loses his balance. Both knees struck the boards. I think his face did as well on the way in. Yeah. And uh, Marty Dungeon taking a look here to see how he is. Of course, Tyler Bozak is back in Toronto, did not make the trip. Here's another look at it. Oh, he loses his balance, and then the momentum, he just goes right into the boards heavily. He's up on his haunches, at least, and that, I think, is a good sign as Petrie kind of rode him right into the end boards, and his knee into Kadri's back and uh, the London native is up and making his own way back to the Toronto bench. And actually it was uh, Paul Ayotte who was out there attending to Kadri. Yeah, we had Marty and Dr. Noah Foreman, the leaf doctor, who's traveling on this trip right in out of the Zamboni area, so plenty of help overlooking Nas there. Oh, very good, Paul. Yes. You're, you were closer to the scene than we were. Well, well medical background and all. Well, that, we want to make sure we get enough uh, shout-outs to the right people, otherwise we'll be getting in trouble when we get on the plane. This is true. Lupo ahead from a Clement. That was turned over. Leafs are able to get it back into the center ice area. Riley had the stick knocked out of his hands. This allows Boyd Gordon to get into the zone. Riley showing some soccer skills there, but can't get it up the boards. He's still without a stick. But Clement sends it around back of the net. Now Paul Ranger launches it high into the center ice area, and that will give Riley an opportunity to get to the bench. But Clement into the forecheck, played off the glass and down. A race for the puck here as Ben Eager is after it, but so is Reimer, but he gives it away. Out in on a sharp angle shot, went high and wide from Archibella. And it's going to rip O'Shea all the way down into the Edmonton zone. 14 and a half minutes to go in the second period. The Leafs scoring in the second minute of the first period and the second minute of the second period for a 2-0 lead. 
Carl Gunnarsson up on the wing for Fraser McLaren. McLaren trying to force it out over the line. Drops it back for Gunnarsson who finds Colt Knoll. The Winnipeg native to center and he'll chip it in. In goes Trevor Smith after it. Around back of the net. It comes into the corner. And the Oilers will go back as the Leafs are trying to get a change going. Yakupov. Unable to carry on. Clarkson tips it in over the line and then narrowly missed a big hit. Played out into the center ice area. Clarkson gets a hit in of his own. Riley ahead for Raymond. Clarkson is into the attack as well and a hit there is sprung free and Sam Gagne gets it out into the center ice area. Off on the left wing, or right wing side for Everly. He can't get it in deep. Yakupov does. That bounces to Gagne but he can't Get his stick on it. Riley's able to skate at the center. And he's going to play it high off the glass, but it doesn't get into the zone. Worked well, though. Yeah, Stanchion sent it right high into the air, and the Leafs are able to recover it. Now they get a rush going with Kessel. On to Raymond. Raymond back to the blue line to Morgan Riley. Riley works to the half board. Centers! And that went off a skate. And Bachman just did get that right pad on it and hold on. From Rexall Place in Edmonton. The Leafs and the Oilers on Sportsnet. Oregon Riley's game has been very efficient the last couple. And Dave Ferris giving him some strong advice, but he does a real nice job here. Pulling in for his defense partner. And then later on in the very same shift, skates the puck out of trouble. That's a bit of a break. It goes off the stitch and it goes right back as planned to Bolin, but the kids. Very intelligent for his age at this level, particularly. So it is a 2-0 Toronto lead. And uh, Kessel and Van Riemsdyk, the goal scorers, as it's poked out in front. Oh, if that had hit the net, it was in. Well, that's obvious. However, it was a stick that was below the shoulder. <laughs> I caught myself. <laughs> Way to go, Newt. You figured out the sport already, have you? Thanks. Into the goals. <laughs> Lupo, that was great eye-hand coordination. He hit that just above waist high and just set it wide. It definitely would have counted oh, as a He made contact under the crossbar. Yep. Here's a chance now for Carter Ashton. <laughs> Apparently the puck has to be all the way over the line this year, too. <laughs> Here's Lupo centering to the far side for Gardner. Gardner holds. Looks back at the blue line. He had Lupo winding up. Now he goes to Paul Ranger. Ranger down low. Lupo lets it come in front. And it is smothered by Bachman and held for a face off in the Oilers zone. World Series Game 6 St. Louis and Boston from Fenway Park. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern on Sportsnet East, Ontario, West and Pacific. And later tonight, stay tuned for Connected immediately following this game. We'll have NHL highlights and uh, a Game 6 World Series preview from Boston. George and Caroline are standing by. Yeah, they were singing Sweet Caroline here. And I know Mark Gaskin and our truck and yours truly are hoping they get to sing a little of that after Game 6 a little more. The Red Sox up. Three games to two, and a, it's been a strange World Series, to be sure, with a lot of strange endings. Puck comes out into the center ice area, tapped back by Fanuf, who is ridden to the boards there on the far side. And Fanuf has to get his stick again as Everly tries to send it in over the line. Yakupov in for checking. The Leafs are able to come out with it. Kadri back into the fray, on to Kessel with Van Riemsdyk. And Reemsdijk with the pass, looked for Kadri in front, then took a shot from a sharp angle that went off the side of the net. Then Reemsdijk around back of the net. Kadri is able to corral it. Now he sends it towards the net. And for the foul, just goes! Holy mackerel, what a set of hands! He took that off the end boards. He had maybe two inches to shoot at, and he puts it on edge to get it in. What a shot! That's mind-boggling. I mean, he was right on the goal line. I don't think he can believe it. <laughs> he goes and gives the players the tap. Fanuf does a good job here just tipping it by. Just a foot on the other side of the goal line, and he rifles it right up high. Oh, man. That's ridiculous. And the goalie, I mean, what are you going to do here? Kadri with a good play to throw it behind the net. Kessel just digs it <laughs> off the boards. 
I'm speechless. I mean, there's not many players in the world that can make that shot. Incredible. Taking, taking care of business in Bachman. <laughs> well, ever since the new contract, I would suggest he has really stepped it up. Now here's a chance on the backhand shot stopped by on the short side by Reimer. One of the leg protecting, skate protecting pieces of equipment has fallen off. Pushed to the wall as it's cleared out into the center ice area. And Orr races after it on the right wing but won't get to it. What a shot from Phil Kessel. He's got six goals in his last three games and seven in his last four. I mean, it's ridiculous. He, he pulls it back and gets all of it. I mean, that was a, a rifle right up to the top corner. I mean, it was not just a flip over the goalie's shoulder. Crazy. Gazdick playing it to the line, kept in by Gardner, and a pass ahead at center. And in over the line, Newton Hopkins trying to get in deep, but can't. Played back into the center ice area, Mason Raymond steals. Raymond with a shot off the short side, and it went wide. These guys do that in practice, and often sit there for hours trying to make that shot from a tight angle like that. So a tremendous bit. A four-game goal-scoring streak now for Phil Kessel, and he's added two here tonight. Pro Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megastore. Phil Kessel with his ninth of the season. Phaneuf and Kadri with the assist. Kadri with his second point of the hockey game. Kessel with his third point of the hockey game. He finished sixth and seventh in the National Hockey League in scoring over the last two years. And he's going to be a Maple Leaf for a while. Into the corner now for Franson. Stripped to the puck. Trying to come in front of the goalie. Do! But a good play by Morgan Riley to tie up his man right on the doorstep. Riley made an excellent play right in front of the net on Gazdick, or excuse me, on uh, Ryan Jones, who was right on the near post as we get an icing call here. Probably another look at this. And Morgan Riley helps his partner out here. Francis struggled a little bit in this game a couple of times giving the puck away, and Riley just calmly was able to knock the puck away with his foot as Jones couldn't find the handle in front of the net. Face off to the left of Richard Bachman. Yeah! And the Maple Leafs with a 3-0 lead midway through period number two. Phaneuf yeah! gets the puck back at the blue line, but his shot has gone off of the leg and ends up as a souvenir in the Toronto bench. And there'll be a face off and a timeout here with the Leafs up by a score of 3 to nothing get a look at the two goals that have scored by Phil Kessel here tonight and what a pair of mittens this young man has on. 3-0 Toronto here in Edmonton and it's the Phil Kessel Show. Two of the great cameramen ever. There's Al Monford who has the night off and there's Bruce Becker. Happy Halloween everybody. Give us a big smile there Bruce. Oh boy. <laughs> One of the best going. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Halloween is fast approaching. And all of you little trick-or-treaters who are watching the game tonight, make sure you're good and safe out there and, and lots of uh, reflectable stuff in your costumes so that you can walk around and enjoy yourself. Yeah. Long on the board, you can back to the blue line, fed back in there by Ranger, but brought out and then tipped back in on a delay by Carter Ashton who a pressure almost came away with it against Vladislav Smeed as the Oilers get it out into the center ice area. Edmonton's defensive woes continuing. They've given up another three goals here tonight. And they are struggling badly in giving up chances and goals. There's McClement across the line. A little give and go that didn't work there with Lupo. Gardner finds some opening and he sends it in. They have now allowed 20 goals in the second period, which is most in the National Hockey League. With the two here tonight. 
And across the line for Gagne, he drops it back, but Yakupov skated by it. The Leafs are able to counterattack here. Kessel unable to get it in. Here's Yakupov in across the line. Still with it to Gagne. Tried to get a shot away. That was blocked by Carl Gunnarsson, who leads the Leafs in block shots this season. Played back into the corner. Gunnarsson in against the board. Yakupov centers. It goes wide. No one home. And the Leafs will play it out into the center ice area. Now upended is Kessel. No penalty there as he slid into the Oilers zone. And it's brought back by Alex Hemsky. Hemsky with a shot. Pat safe. Rebound in front. Hot into the corner by Kadri. Played back to the blue line. Long shot knocked down in front, but up, just does find it in time. And Cooley played it into the corner and tries to get it ahead, and Van Riemsdyk gets it out. Kessel racing after it. Goaltender Bachman out of the cage to scoop it around back of the net. But Van Riemsdyk is there to send it at the net. And a blocking arm save made by Bachman there. That was going in. Anton Belov doesn't get pucked out the first time, does the second. 13 minutes in the books here as it has bounced down into the Toronto zone. Laid around on the board by Reimer and brought out at center ice by Toronto. Here's Boland in over the line with a two-game scoring streak of his own and that's sent wide to the net. Franson is going to chip it back in. It's a delayed offside. Clarkson tags up and it'll be Jeff Petrie with the puck on the near side. Petrie off the board to try and get it in. Everly slid it into the corner for him. Our Nugent Hopkins after the puck and so is Petrie. Rounds back to the net. It goes Nugent Hopkins trying to center. That bounces wide of the goal and it's brought out at center ice now by Morgan Riley. On to Mason Raymond. Raymond chipping it high into the corner for Clarkson. Clarkson taken to the boards but tries to shield the puck. And it's brought into the slot area. Smith couldn't get a shot. The Leafs are in the midst of a change as the shot by Raymond goes wide of the goal. Back to the blue line to Gardner. Gardner into the near corner. Fraser McLaren off the bench gets a pretty good hit in there on Nugent Hopkins. And it is sent down into the Toronto zone and icing charge. Coming here against the Edmonton Oilers in a faceoff coming in the circle to the right of Bachman. Well, Joe, you talked about the Edmonton Oilers and their struggles to keep the puck out of their own net. And it has been a real issue here in Edmonton again this year. They've had some goalie issues early. And their defense, frankly, are just not quite ready yet. Their kids are coming, but they've got some blue line issues. Their forwards are going to be great, but even their forward group is still very young. If you look at how long it's taken Phil Kessel to develop as a player, he's now 26. And all of the young Oiler forwards are just finding their way still in the National Hockey League also. 3.77 is their team goals against average, which is 30th in the NHL. Van Riemsdyk. A pass on the far side, a centering effort there by Gardner, and he had Kessel wide open again if he was able to get it to him. Good work by Kadri there to get back and fill in for Gardner, who jumped up into the play. Gardner around back of the net. Lays it off into the corner to Paul Ranger. Bank pass, did Kessel touch that? Doesn't matter, it's from his side of center ice anyway. And it'll be an icing charge here against the Leafs with 5.23 left to play in the period. Intact Insurance is proud to sponsor the Toronto Maple Leafs and all the fans who keep believing. Intact Insurance, you're back. Phil Kessel has four career hat tricks, two of them in the Leaf uniform. And, uh, of course, his most recent was just... Uh, a couple of games ago against the Ducks of Anaheim. And he's got two here tonight. Padre couldn't get it in. Kessel doesn't slow up his man. Here's Boyd Gordon in over the line. And Ranger makes a good play to knock it away. And comes away with the puck. Great play by Ranger. Leafs after the icing. Now get Boland to get it into the zone. Boland with a shot. And he snapped that over top of the goal. Riley plays it into the corner for Dave Boland. Mimico native back of the net for Fraser McLaren. Bank pass back to the blue line to Franson. Franson with a wrist shot. Rebound, Clarkson! Scrambling to get it around in the wraparound, but he was too well covered and had too many sticks to get it by. He had an inch and a half to shoot it, but couldn't duplicate the Kessel match. <laughs> that, that goal is going to be shown for a while. That was just ridiculous. Oh, I mean, to be that tight... Pass. Pull it back and throw it up over the goalie the way he did. 
Kanye. that angle, I mean, oh my goodness. Kanye after it into the corner for Everly. Looking for Jones. Jones has it back of the net. The wrap around the tip. Wow. James Reimer wearing another body, and he's wow. blasted into the net. Reimer sh Raymond shoved him right into him, and I'm surprised there's not an interference call on the play against the Maple Leafs. And that is Justin Schultz extricating himself. James Reimer doesn't look any worse for the wear. He's got a 3-0 lead here late in the second period. Hey, join your Toronto Maple Leaf players, the Lady Leafs alumni and front office staff on Monday, November the 4th for a night with the blue and white. Presented by Blackberry. Also appearing with Leaf, Leaf great Doug Gilmore. You can visit MLSEFoundation.org or to learn more about the night. It's always a fun time and it's going to be at the Old Garden. It could be a fun night as well. Right here, the Leafs are having a fairly enjoyable night, leading three to nothing. There's a draw one by the Oilers, fed in by Schultz into the corner, and a sharp angle shot, Karam's wide of the net. Jones trying to send it to the net, hit the side of the goal. Hemsky plays it back of the goal, into the far corner. Gunnarsson ties his man up, and Clement gets the puck free. Phaneuf looks up ice with some skating room to his liking, and it's tipped off Carter Ashton down into Oiler territory. Under four minutes to play here in period number two. Leafs have added to a 1-0 first period advantage with goals from Van Riemsdyk and the second of the night for Kessel, his ninth of the season. Right down into the Oilers zone. Belov goes around back of the net. Up ahead for Hemsky. Hemsky hits the Leaf blue line with a little move to the right and draws it back towards the blue line. Sends it in wide of the goal, far corner. Kanye with it there, looking for an outlet. Back pedals it behind the net for Nail Yakupov, trying to come out in front. And he swept it wide of the leaf goal. Fed off the glass and down the ice by Cody Franson, but it won't have enough to go for icing, says the linesman, who are Steve Barton and Brian Mock here tonight. Referees Paul Dvorsky, the elder statesman, from Guelph at 55, and a shot stopped in the short side by Lammer, and he's going to hold on. Tom Cowell of Vernon, B.C. is the other referee this evening. They haven't had much to do. Winston and Miners and one power play in the game. And they've kind of let them go. And Everly, one of the bright spots for the Edmonton Oilers. you got to love the way he plays. And Reimer, again, has been excellent in this game. Position. And still just 23. And you got to remember that when you talk about all these young Oiler forwards. And the fan base here is losing patience. I get it. They haven't been in the playoffs for so many years, but this is still a very much of a work in project, pro progress with this team. Chipped along the boards by Gunnarsson and launched to center ice then by Van Riemsdyk. Vladislav Smeed forced beat by Kessel to the near side to Jeff Petrie, and it is deflected down into the Toronto end. Enough circles the goal and just launches it down into Oiler territory. Sneed chased by Clarkson, taken to the boards. That's going to draw some attention in there as Kadri arrives on the scene with Boyd Gordon. They're going to try and pin it to the boards. Hack, whack, slash, push, shove, and still no Rondell. It may have disappeared. Well, that's I think they got to blow the whistle. No, 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 let it go on. This is too much fun. Now here's a chance for Gardner. It's finally Doug Frey. Far side, David Clarkson a shot. That went off Kev Kadri's. There's a bouncing puck to the goal line! And the right pad of Bachman got there to deny David Clarkson his first Leaf goal. What a great second effort by the goal. Wow. Clarkson gets the pass again. He's across the line, onto the left wing for Mason Raymond. Raymond turns. Raymond has it taken away, and then he knocked it away from Alex Hensky. Here's Clarkson once more. Trying to tip it in there for Dave Bolin. That doesn't work. That's going to bound down into the Leaf zone. Reimer's going to... Pounce on it. 114 is over in the period. And you like Bachman's battle. And when you're scrambling, that all becomes second effort as a goaltender, just like any other player on the ice. And look at him find it, find it. And there's the right leg that just shoots out at the last second, or that would have been 4 nothing Toronto. He's been fine in that. You can't fault him for the three goals. And he has not been the issue tonight in this game. But Clement will take the face off as Carter Ashton's got some debris to hand to the 
linesman Steve Barton. And the draw won by Gagne. Slid over on the far side for Sneed. Back in front of the net. A shot. And Yakupov had that deflect wide of the goal. The Leafs break it out at center, leading three to nothing. Slid in over the line here. Is a chance for Joffrey Lupo. And that is smothered as Ashton gets into a shoving match. And everybody piles in behind the net. 57.8 seconds to go in the period. Seen a lot of this end-to-end -end stuff tonight here. And a chance there, and the counterattack by Toronto tonight has been terrific, and it has caused all kinds of issues for the Edmonton Oilers as the Leafs have had more than enough three-on-two or two-on-one breaks right from their own zone, jumping by Oilers forwards. Three goals tonight means the Leafs lead the Eastern Conference in goal scoring. A draw to the right of Bachman, McClement. Scrambling the draw, puck still free, Lupo back to the point, Carl Gunnarsson back to Lupo. Lupo turns on the backhand to send it back to the net. Ashton can't get there in time as Belov got it up on the wing and out at center it goes. Right back down into Edmonton territory. Petrie, round back to the Oiler net. Starting to come out with it. Didn't quite get to the red line, but gets some assistance there from Boyd Gordon, who sends it in. And Lupo will corral it in the far corner for Toronto and bank it off the boards to center. And Jay McClement buys the rest of the rink and gets an exchange. 15 seconds left to go in the period. Leafs have done a much better job in this period, getting pucks deep into the zone when they needed a change. It's been a, a far tidier period than neutral zone for the Maple Leafs. Now the Oilers in across the line. Kanye shot just as the horn goes. And another save made by Reimer. He has stopped all 24. The Leafs have had 21, including a pair of goals from Kessel, the other from Van Riemsdyk. We'll go to Darren Millard in the panel. Leafs lead 3 0. Welcome back to Rexall Place here in Edmonton as the Toronto Maple Leafs have built a 3 0 lead after 40 minutes of play to kick off their three game Western road trip. A look at the second period summary, and it was the law firm of Van Riemsdyk and Kessel. And uh, Van Riemsdyk with his sixth, Kessel with his ninth, his second goal of the hockey game, his seventh goal in his last four games. Seven goals in his last four on 13 shots, Joe. And unbelievable when you think about it, and he is just scoring all different ways, in tight, going to the net, and then tonight, a pretty little play on the breakaway. You heard Nick talk about his foot positioning and his hands, and there is a good example of those unbelievable hands as somehow he finds room on that last goal. And that is what he has done as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He has got Angora Mittens. They are as soft as that. And uh, the two of them have played exceptionally well together, Van Riemsdyk and Kessler. Yeah, and imagine when they, in the U.S. Olympic team, the damage they'll be able to do on the bigger ice surface for Team USA. Uh, look at the passes, and these two guys just have some chemistry together. It's magic. And you know, you got to give Tyler Bozak some credit. I know he's not here, and Kadri is filling in for him. But Bozak has played third fiddle, if you will, to this line, but has done the defensive aspect of it, done a lot of stuff of filling in for these guys and letting them be the creativity of the line. And his face-off ability as well is really a bonus that the Leafs are missing tonight. Taylor Hall and Ryan Smith in your shot, Taylor Hall on your left, and yeah, the Edmonton Oilers have had their share of injuries as well. Brady right. Tavish on your left, Kevin Lowe right beside him there, the management team of the Edmonton Oilers. And they were all part of those many banners that are hanging here in the Rexall place. Mid speculation that uh, they're trying to get a new arena built in the downtown area. I was talk talking with Greg Killing today, old broadcast partner here and a long time member of uh, the hockey community here in Edmonton. Here's Franson dishing it off the boards to center. It's rattled down into the Toronto zone. Franson plays it back. David Clarkson will feed it off to Dion Phaneuf. Phaneuf to Franson. Franson off the boards to center. 
Played back in, but it's a delayed offside. And so Franson with some skating room and time finds Benoit, who gets it off the stick of Raymond and down into the Oilers zone. Clarkson in there looking for an offensive tip. And the puck comes up on the wing for Gagne, and he'll play at the center ice. Ranger for Clarkson, right back down into Edmonton territory it goes. Bachman will leave it back at the goal as it's played up on the wing, and the Oilers trying to break out at center. On to the left wing side for Yakupov. He is ridden to the boards heavily there by Paul Ranger. Well, Paul Ranger's game the last couple have been much better. I thought his best game as a leap was against Pittsburgh on Saturday night. He's been steady here again tonight. Now here's Schultz playing it in back of the net for Jordan Everly. Everly plays it back to the blue line for Belov. Long shot, doesn't make it through. Blocked by Kadri. Up along the board, Van Riemsdyk gets a piece of his man. Puck in front of the net for Everly. A shot right on. Oh, maybe the best save of the game right there for James Reimer. And of course, the minute I say it, Ranger gets beat in the slot. And Reimer with another big save to help him out. And good pressure here by the Oilers. This is similar to the way they played in the first period. And Everly just undresses Ranger as Ranger goes for the puck. And Reimer once again has been extremely steady in this game and his positional play has been bang on. So the faceoff is to his left. And this young Oiler team is not going to go away, so the Maple Leafs have to make sure they're pretty tidy here for this third period, defending the three-goal lead. Riley plays it around back of the net. Jay McClement pushes it back into the corner. They've got... McClement after it again, a centering pass blocked by Gardner. Gardner and Riley working the blue line. The two youngsters are out there. And onto the corner it goes now for Arcabello. Arcabello works back towards the blue line. Broken up, the Oilers have it again. Trying to get it in front. Boyd Gordon mishandles it and comes out at center ice. Justin Schultz gets it back in over the line. A long shot off the chest of Reimer, quickly cleared by Riley out of harm's way. McClement in there against the boards. Puck comes free, another shot, pad save by Reimer once more. And now Gardner sifts his way around and now will just gingerly play it out at center for McClement. And McClement buys the rest of the rink by flipping it into the Oilers zone. Kravestov at center, or intercepts that. And it is fed back into the zone by Trevor Smith, who's just in the forecheck. Raveshkov with it, with Orr knocked down by him, but here's Fraser McLaren stealing. He gets it to Orr, Orr around back of the net. Orr trying to center, and it's blocked. And the rebound is brought out now by Edmonton, but only to be turned over and sent back by Cody Franson. Franson and Ranger now a defense tandem out there. Pass ahead on the right side. Ben Eager sends it across the blue paint. No one home. Head back in behind the net. Ranger trying to get to it. Got it away from Eager. And now Smith will play it ahead. And Orr will battle his way to get it out at center. Along with Fraser McLaren. He rolls it down into Edmonton territory in the Leafs chain. Ladislav Smeed. Drops it back to his defense partner. Miller's trying to break out with Petrie getting it up on the wing. And it's fed into the zone by Ryan Jones, the Chatham native. And Knuff skates around back of the net. Edmonton native now, the captain, gets it to Clarkson, who gets it ahead. Raymond across the line with Dave Bola. Bola unable to accept that pass. But Clarkson will hunt it down in the near corner. They're trying to play it back of the net. Petrie is tied up there by Mason Raymond. The puck high in the air. Nugent Hopkins trying to play it up on the wall, and now Hensky has some difficulties. He scoops it around back of the net again. Quickly a pass ahead for Jones. Jones is surrounded by white jerseys and fans on the shoot towards the net. Play back of the net for Carl Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson just launches it high into the center ice area. 3-0 Toronto. Two in the second, one in the first. Oilers reflected down into the Toronto zone. Hustling in there after it was Justin Schultz. Broken up by Riley. Riley back of the net battles Gagne. Centering pass to the goal line. Knocked away as Reimer was pushed back into the net again. Another two on one. Here's the duo again. And it's tipped over the net. Maybe stopped there by Bachmann off Van Riemsdyk. 
Oilers counterattack. Yakupov dropping it back. Fell off with a shot. And a glove save by Reimer and Hell. Uh, Backman with a real good save here. The goaltender reads this extremely well on Van Riemsdyk. Get an oil change by December 15th and get a free gift. Michelin Hybrid Wiper Blades. Get your coupon at MrLube.com. Oh, you heard Doug McLean in the intermission talk about the Edmonton Oilers and they want to play the riverboat gambling hockey, but against two guys like this, you're going to get burnt nine times out of ten. And this time it was Buckman who did a great job coming across the goaltender and robbing Van Riemsdyk. Just got the stick on it. At the point, the stick explodes from Ference, and now here are the Leafs trying to take advantage. Ference has gotten a new stick, but it never did get out of the Toronto zone. Reimer pushes it along the wall, back to the point, and it's going to be brought out now by Carter Ashton, who gets knocked down, but is able to get the puck to center ice. Schultz over on the near side. Andrew Ference going to three Stanley Cup finals. And is the new captain of the Edmonton Oilers. And there's Gardner getting it up on the wing. And there's really been some mixing and matching as far as the defense pairs are concerned here in this third period. Now they've got Riley out again with Cody Franson. Across the line is Nugent Hopkins. Riley chasing him. Nugent Hopkins to the boards. Tied up. Riley do, does a good job of staying right with him. Al tries to push it back into the corner. Round back of the net with Cadbury chasing his man, and the puck comes free, and Ashton is able to bring it out at center. Ashton plays it in, and there'll be a change of players going for him as Kessler goes into forecheck along with Cadbury. Now turnover. Here's Van Riemsdyk to Kessel back into the slot. Scores! Morgan Riley's first NHL goal! Holy mackerel, the kid likes the lamp! Well, he's done it a few times in this building, but now at the professional level. As he comes in late, and uh, what a terrific shot. And the smile afterwards tells the story. The Leafs are on a change here, a giveaway, a brutal one by the Edmonton Oilers, and then Kessel right here finds Riley, and he rifles it up over top of the goaltender who didn't have a chance. What a shot. And good for Kadri in front of the net to create a bit of a screen on the play also. With the assist by Kessel, he's now tied for second in the Ladies NHL Toronto scoring race. Scored by number so the Maple Leafs have a 4 nothing lead and Phil Kessel has a four-point night. And Morgan Riley has his first National Hockey League goal to go along with four assists. Van Riemsdyk will draw the other assist. And the Maple Leafs are leading four to nothing. The Maple Leafs goes for by Riley. The assists Kessel and Van Riemsdyk. Played into the corner by Reimer. Off a stick it goes. Tipped the center by Mason Raymond. Spellov dropping it back. And back into the Toronto zone it goes. Here is Ranger getting it up on the wing and then across the line. Oilers have now surrendered 16 goals in the third period which is the most in the National Hockey League. Long shot, block, played out into the center ice area by Gardner, and it's down into the Oilers' zone. And the uh, thousands of Leaf fans in attendance tonight are enjoying themselves. Gardner, able to skate away from traffic, gets it ahead, played by Smith to center, and wrapped into the zone by Fraser McLaren. He jams his man Schultz to the boards, and it is fed by Smith around back of the net. Orr stands in front of his man, taking Eager out of the play. Branson for Orr. Did he touch it? Apparently not. Icing will be charged, and it'll be brought back into the Toronto zone as it'll be a face-off in the circle to the left of James Weimer with 12 minutes and 10 seconds to go in period number three. Morgan Riley with his first National Hockey League goal. He will never forget that. Draw scrummed into the corner it goes. Gardner taken to the boards by Ryan Jones. Trevor Smith trying to get it freed up and has, but can't get it out. 
Now here's Cody Franson taking it back along the wall and playing it on the glass. And hack, whack, and slash by Ashton, but it doesn't get out. He'll try the near side, and Jake Gardner. Gardner cycles it back, but that hit a leg, and now here's Franson stepping in front of a dangerous pass in front. The Oilers still have it, though. Nugent Hopkins sends it just wide of the net. He's down and slow to get up. Uh, there's going to be penalty a penalty here. here. It's going to be to Cody Franson. And then... Nugent Hopkins gives Franson yeah, and, a little slash. And he just got kneed the last game he played. And so he's a little sensitive to that. You know that. And I'm not quite sure there's a collision here on this play between Franson and Nugent Hopkins to the left of your screen. Ooh, that's a... A dangerous looking play. And does the knee come out? Yep, yeah, it does. So knee to Franson. And the first power play for our Edmonton to come. Well, if you're wondering why Ryan Nugent Hopkins is a little sensitive, this is Kyle Clifford on Sunday night. And now tonight he gets it again. Yeah, Same leg. And you can see this time he's a little sore on the bench at the moment. Franson in the penalty box for uh, two minutes. The Leafs' first penalty kill of the game. We've only had two power plays in the contest. One for Toronto and now one for the Edmonton Oilers. A Clement out there. Lost the draw. Knocked down on the play as it comes Stay to Belov. Belov gets the return pass. Sends it on to the near side for Jordan Everly. Down into the corner. Back it comes to Bellon once more, far side, that shot went just wide, Everly tried to stuff it in the short side but failed, Carl Gunnarsson in against the boards is knocked down, uses his glove to push it ahead, and then Van Riemsdyk didn't get it out when he had a chance to clear, he was looking for McClement on a short handed rush, Leafs are back in against the boards, Puck is dug free, Bellon to the far side, back to Bellon, just kept in at the blue line, Everly with it again, down low, centering pass! Sprawling out was Reimer, and the puck is cleared out of harm's way by Jay McClement. Back to the blue line, Belloc. Here's Everly stepping in front, got a shot away, blocked by Fanuc, and wired off the boards and down the ice. Uh, good play by Dion Fanuc there. Great left pad saved by James as well. Joe Bowen along with Greg Millen, and that dulcet tone voice you heard was Paul Hendrick. Onto the wing, it goes on the left wing side. Boyd Gordon and pass in front of the net, too far for Arcabello. Back to the blue line, kept in near side. Hemsky. Hemsky winds, fakes. Back to the point, it goes. Shows the shot, juggle, knocked down in front. Reimer sprawled out. He is in a major spread eagle position there, but is able to come up with the puck underneath that glove. World Series Game 6, St. Louis and Boston from Fenway Park. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Sportsnet Coast to Coast East, Ontario West and Pacific. And Thursday night, the National Football League. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Miami Dolphins at 8 p.m. Eastern on Sportsnet 360. Looking forward to both those games. A draw to the right of Reimer. 33 seconds left in the France and Minor. A Clement remains out there. And the draw one and... An not shooting the puck there was Hemsky. Near side, or rather Nugent Hopkins. Here's Hemsky now with a pass, gets it back again. Hemsky looks in front of the net, still has it. Back to the blue line it'll go. Schultz over on the far side. Nugent Hopkins doesn't shoot it, gets it back to Schultz. Near side for Hemsky. Hemsky holds, puck cross ice pass. Nugent Hopkins shot right on. Reimer the save, he tried to sprawl on the rebound. And then it's carried off the stance and then down the ice. A penalty will expire. Branson is out of the box. Leafs are sixth in penalty kill in the lead. But have stayed out of the penalty box here tonight. And they have just pushed themselves into fifth. On the boards now on the far side. Here is Kadri in across the middle. Passing into the slot. Oh, a deflection there as Clarkson was going to the front of the net. And a good save made by Richard Bachman. The Leafs four and the Oilers no score. Bill Kessel has a big night with four points. Well, Dallas Aikens got, has a lot of work to do. And here's another example of it here. The Leafs in their own zone. One pass. Three Oilers get caught. 
and it's a three on two from the Leaf blue line all the way in. And even at that, when the Oilers get back, they're not in good defensive positioning because they're chasing, and their goaltender has to make another great save. Puck down into the zone, or trying to get to his man. Grabbed there by Gardner in over the line, and it's pushed out at center ice. Eager gets it in over the line. Ranger took it away from him. Gardner being chased here by Eager. Played quickly around on the wall, but not out. Kept in at the blue line by Grabeshkov. He winds and delivers, and that's deflected wide of the Toronto goal. Near side, grabbed by Ladislav Smeed. Tied up by Orr, but back to the net it goes. Fraser McLaren trying to get there. Shielded the puck, but it bounces in along the wall. A stick goes flying into the air. Whose is it? It's uh, actually, it's Fraser McLaren's. Around back of the net it goes, and here is Ranger getting it ahead to McLaren, and he'll tip it out into the center ice area. Leafs are changing. Orr and Gazdick having a word with one another. Linesmen have moved in between those two, and there are going to be minor penalties to both. Smart by Orr. I mean, it's not the time. This team's up by 4-0, and they're going to take Orr right into the game. And Gazdick as well. Yeah. Uh, I would think misconduct penalties are probably being called. And Gazdick is gone for the evening after as well. Luke Gazdick Ellie. has had four major penalties. There's Orr with the hit. And that's what started it. And Orr's had two. They were in the first game of the season in Montreal in his uh, much publicized go rounds with George Peros and has not had a fighting major since. Yeah, since. So both players are dismissed. They'll get the warm water, the dry towels, and maybe if there's even an orange tray in there, they might grab that. Although those days are pretty much gone. Oh, Joe, aren't yeah. <laughs> you used to get the you're, orange you're, tray. You're dating yourself there, my friend. <laughs> And this young man's going to need two showers. Oh, boy, he's been great tonight. Again. And, you know, people are saying, oh, look at the rebounds. Who cares? He's stopping the puck. And all he keeps doing is winning. Been terrific in this game. His positioning has been excellent. We don't ask how. Just do it. Stop it any way you can. Loose puck at the side of the goal. Reimer has dropped his glove and grabbed the puck with his blocking glove, making sure that that... Leg is above the goal line, and so uh, face-off coming in the Toronto zone with 7.52 to go in the third period. Leafs will leave immediately after the game for Calgary and play a fairly early start Calgary time tomorrow. Yeah. 6 o'clock Calgary time, 8 o'clock Eastern. Flames, Flames have practiced ice tomorrow morning at 9.45, guys, at least shortly thereafter, but I, I suspect it might be an optional for, uh, for the Toronto side. Now they'll get out of here at a decent time as this game has moved along pretty quickly. A short little flight to Calgary, it'll be fun. Morgan Riley sends it out and down the ice. There's going to be an icing charge here as it is fed uh, by Morgan Riley, who has scored his first NHL goal tonight. Tonight's game summary brought to you by The Brick. Nobody beats The Brick for furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TV. And Phil Kessel, another huge night along with Van Riemsdyk and Reimer. And that's pretty much the story in this game. Speaking of the brick, they have an enormous minor hockey tournament out this neck of the woods that they sponsor and do a nice job on that. Here's Belov working right into the slot. Right and goal. Down is Reimer and he's found it again. James Reimer sprawling out, nose first. And he has been able to come up with a number of scrambled pucks where he's able to find it in a maze of legs. Let's watch this. And again, Reimer getting down, finding pucks. And that one was left leg. I thought he had his glove under it. I did not see that second one. And uh, all five of the white jersey helpers were in the goal crease along with Reimer to Pull that out. 37 shots now for the Edmonton Oilers for just 24 for the Maple Leafs. But 4-0 on the score. On shot, stopped there by Reimer. And along the boards, 
Yakupov gets it back to the net. 13 to 3 of the shots here in this third period for Edmonton. The reliefs of counterattack to get the Riley goal that have been sitting back. And the Oilers have been benefiting from that with having zone play in the Toronto end. James Reimer has been making sure that nothing more developed other than what has transpired thus far, which is 4-0. Good for the save percentage. The Leaf save percentages are ridiculous. 9.30 for Bernier, 9.33 for Reimer, and his has climbed appreciably here tonight. Here is Bowen. Got it ahead for Clarkson. He tried to tip it by but couldn't. And backpedaling with it now is Sam Gagne. Gagne coming to center. Up on the left wing side it goes. Jones with a sharp angle shot. <laughs> Reimer ducked. And that went over his head. And out into the center ice area. A bank pass ahead for Jones. Jones trying to get it into the slot. And unable to get a shot away, chopped by Van Riemsdyk, it'll come to center ice again. These refs have left the play tonight, and there was an old ref by the name of Andy Van Helleman that used to try to catch the red eye of West. <laughs> and there was never a penalty in those games when he had that plate. I wonder if. Play the tonight. puck, Melzi, play the puck. Oh, we yeah. don't need a start and he, used to, and he used to get mad when you didn't. <laughs> Face off after an icing down in the Oilers zone. Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. Die-hard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Andy's going to take exception for you calling him old. <laughs> well, that makes me in the same category, uh, Joe, so there you go. Okay. Played out into the center ice area, and so here's Ranger getting it back into the center ice area for Joffrey Lupa, left wing feed. Ashton carries into the zone, pushed into the corner by Nick Schultz. And now McClement trying to get it in front, but couldn't. Brought back by Nugent Hopkins to center, broken up by Ranger on the far side. Now they do get it across the line. Yakupov went wide, gets the rebound, and that was stopped by Reimer. Played back in by Belov, around back of the net for Yakupov. Yakupov loses it, Nugent Hopkins centers, that's to the side of the net. Reimer down, but the puck comes to the near wing. Back at the point, Belov fanning on it. A Clement taken to the boards, able to push it along, get it to the line, but not out. Now he does push it out, but there's not an awful lot left in the tank. No chance of getting away on a breakaway. The Oilers get it right back in again. Off the bench comes Ben Eager. Eager's pass is right onto the stick of Trevor Smith. Leaf centerman carries into the zone. McLaren is racing for the front of the net, but the shot was going wide. Gloved anyway by Richard Bachman and held. The Leafs four, the Oilers no score. Toronto try to win its fourth on the road at ninth overall. Our score is 4 0 here. The Leafs leading. George and Caroline are working on connected. Let's find out what is in store. Thanks, gentlemen. The Hockey Central panel is ready to go. They'll break down another big night by the Leafs. Yeah, and we'll take a look at the other games in the NHL connected coming up after the game. There's another Caroline that calls me Uncle Joe who's got a big game going on down this weekend, uh, doesn't she? Western Mustangs going for a third straight OUA lacrosse championship. Joe, support those kids out in Queens this weekend. It should be fun. All right, we sure will. And we get an offside at the Toronto Blue Line. Four and a half minutes to go here in the third period. And the Leafs have averaged 34.9 shots against per game this year. And it will escalate here. There's 41 for the Oilers. But the bottom line is you're playing the score. And the score was 3-0 when this period started. It's been escalated to four as the Leafs continue to be an opportunistic group. And Phil Kessel has had just a marvelous, marvelous night. Yeah, the only thing, Joe, the coaches don't like in these situations when you sit back on this and rely on your goaltender in the third period, is particularly in back-to-back -back situations, is carryover. Sometimes I've watched it many times. Here's Bowen trying to center, and it comes back to the blue line. Enough. Off on the far side it goes. Van, or Gunnarsson with a shot that is slowed up. 
and held by Bach. Anything for Hockey is brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Uh, tonight we feature the two goals by Kessel and both works of art. First of all, right on the first shift of the game for him, a little deep five hole and the shot that I still can't believe he was able to make right up in the top corner, almost on the goal line. Finish my thought about carryovers. You know, you don't you get into bad habits in third periods, and often they carry over the next game, and you have a slow start. So we'll watch for that tomorrow night. But the Leafs offensive ability again shines here in this game. We may have to open the cargo door on the plane to get the smile on Morgan Riley That's into the, uh, in the a, cabin, don't you think? He's such a good kid oh. too. You know, you, the kind of kid you cheer for. Loves the game. Very respectful. He's played very well as a Toronto Maple Leaf so far. He's out there now on an icing charge with Franson, and it'll be brought back down into the uh, Oiler zone. Randy Carlisle's team is going to go to nine and four, and uh, along with the red hot Tampa Bay Lightning, are the toast of the Eastern Conference at this particular point in the season. Yeah, Tampa lost to New Jersey tonight, two-one, Joe. So uh, a chance for the Leafs to expand a little bit. Draw to the right of Bachman. Is scrummed. And Fraser McLaren couldn't get to it. This fourth line has seen a lot of ice time in this third period. Yeah, the Kessel line, in fairness to the Leafs' third period, have played very little in this third period as Randy lengthens his bench a little bit. Rests the stars to get them ready again for the morning. And give other people an opportunity to play. David Clarkson taking the extra shift with the banishment of Colton Orr, working with McLaren and Smith as it's played down into the Toronto end. Reimer leaves it there for Gardner. His pass was picked off. It goes around back of the net. Three minutes and five seconds left to play in the third period. Sent back down into the corner in round now for Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Nugent Hopkins trying to leave it there for Belov, and it is pushed out into the center ice area by the Maple Leafs. And over the line it comes again. Here's Yakupov pulling the brakes on, sending it around back of the net. The Oiler fans have become rather frustrated. I don't think there's any question about that. A long shot is just off the mark wide by Jones. Tipped along the boards, but not out. A wrap around a tip cuts in front. Reimer's left hand. The right minister of defense is red hot. And he's been able to find pucks all game long through traffic. And it's a bit of a change up, but his glove is in perfect position. And he makes a dandy. Trying to win his third game against no losses against Edmonton in his career. And the Leafs are four out of five in this building the last number of years. By the way, that's the 42nd save for Reimer tonight. Draw one by Edmonton. Smead. Works down to the goal line, banks it back at the net. Centering pass went off Reimer, and it is going to get the center ice. Everly shoots it back in. Morgan Riley gets to it first, plays it off the boards to center. Carter Ashton couldn't get it into the zone, and neither could Jay McClement. Riley has settled it down. Did that come out? Yes, says the linesman. And so much for the smile, Joe. Uh, they have taken the, get the goal away from Morgan Riley, and they've given it to Kadri who hit him in the hip on the way in. All right, let's watch it here. The left leg and right off the... Wow. Yep, there. So the kid, you got to wait again. I know. You know. I know. I'm, you know, I'm kind of with you on that one, Joe. I, you know, you're going to be the official scorer. I think you could just... Close your eyes. File that one in the back <laughs> of your hip. Please. He'll get it soon enough, Joe. Wow. Here are the Oilers bringing it in on the wing. Backhand went wide of the net. It banks into the corner. Fanook knocks his man down. And Boland is going to chip it out at center ice. That has not been announced. So Morgan Riley does not know that. And neither does Nazem Kadri, who I am sure would have gone over to the 
scorer's table and said, that didn't touch me. But we've got somebody up here with an eagle eye who has decided that that is not the case. And Nazem Kadri is going to be credited with his fifth goal of the season. Pass up on the left wing is tipped down into the Oilers zone. And 109 left to play in the third period. Brought out by the Oilers on the left wing side. It's going to roll towards the net too far. Poke into the corner by Reimer. One piece of business to be done yet. And the Oilers still pressing and a shot goes high over top of the net. It rebounds to the line. Oh! <laughs> the line's been cut back right into the leaf pitch. And he had to extricate himself. Brian Mock pushed back into the fray by the leaf players. Back of the net, Gagne. Trying to chip it in front, and it goes into the near corner. And it'll be brought by Fraser McLaren to the line. He couldn't get it out, but Trevor Smith does. 24 seconds left. And all of the line, the Oilers. Left wing side for Jones, and it was centered. And now Ranger will take his time to skate it out and just chip it into the center ice area. Smith gets to it. 10 seconds left. James Reimer is going to record his 11th career shutout as the Maple Leafs will start their three-game Western road swing on a positive note, winning four to nothing. So they're going to take Morgan Riley's big night away from him, but there is a big night right there for James Reimer, who stops 43 shots. And the Maple Leafs win it by a score of four to nothing. Yeah, well-deserved shutout too, as the boys kind of left him alone often in the first period and in the third as well. And he was one of the difference makers in this game tonight. And you can put Kessel in that, as well as James Van Riemsdyk. Kessel from Kadri and Raymond. Van Riemsdyk from Kessel. Kessel from Fanuf and Kadri. And now Kadri from Kessel and Van Riemsdyk. There's a look at the three stars as the Maple Leafs open this three-game trip through Western Canada on a positive note, winning by a score of four to nothing here against the Edmonton Oilers, who struggle now, have gone one and four at home and three, nine, and two on the course of the year. For Greg Millen and Paul Hendrick and all of our crew, glad you've joined us here tonight. We're gonna send it off to Connected to get all of the updates. Send it off to George and Caroline.